Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to show you how to make a beautiful, fresh strawberry pie. I love this recipe. I'm also going to serve it with some mascarpone whipped cream. It's just absolutely delicious. Screams of summer, especially since strawberries are in season. I mean, it's just like a must, a must make. And there's something about strawberry pie that I think don't quote me on this, it's very retro. I find it to be very classic, very 70s. I just picture it on you know, the dinner table in the 1970s. I just think there's something about it that's just magnificent. So I'm thrilled to share it with you. We're gonna start with the ingredients to make the crust first. We're gonna make a very basic all butter pie crust. And all you need is all purpose flour, salt, very cold unsalted butter and some ice water. And that is it. Now traditionally, I do like to use a mixture of butter and vegetable shortening to make my pie crust. But for this recipe, I really like an all butter pastry here. I just think it gives you a little, you know, it's a little richer. And it's also because we're not using a cream, you know, any cream filling um, in the pie. It's just gonna be a strawberry filling. I'm gonna serve the cream component on top. So I like the idea of a rich all butter pastry. Okay, in the food processor, everything but the water and just pulse it until the butter is distributed throughout the dry ingredients and it just resembles small peas. That looks great. You can see the butter is distributed well. Now while I'm pulsing, I'm going to add a tablespoon of ice cold water at a time. I'm probably going to end up using about four tablespoons until the dough comes together. Don't over beat it because you don't want to, you don't want to completely melt the butter. This looks fantastic. I ended up actually using six tablespoons of water, and it really just changes a lot depending on how humid it is in your house. Um, so just keep the water on hand, and it's just important that you don't over mix it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to gather this into a disc, or into a ball or whatever, and then pop, I'm gonna cover it, and pop it in the fridge to let it rest for an hour, and then, We'll get going on making the filling, which is just so good. It's just wonderful. So I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge to rest, and then we'll move on. So I ended up leaving the pie crust in the fridge overnight. Mommy duties, things to do. But really, pie crust is one of those things that you should always have in the fridge, whether it's homemade or store-bought. Sometimes at the grocery store, there's some good deals on pie crust, and even I'm tempted, and I have in the past purchased some just because why not, you know? And you can also have some in the freezer too, that way you can just thaw some out and make pies anytime your heart desires. It could be pretty awesome in my book. What I've got going on is my oven preheating to 375, nine inch pie plate, sprayed with a little nonstick spray. And I am just going to, I'm warming up my pie crust in my hands a little bit. You always want to warm it up about 10 minutes before you're ready to roll it out, just so that it becomes more pliable. This is why I love this pie crust recipe, because look at how forgiving it is. And you can see the pockets of butter. That's going to give you a really beautiful flavor. This crust is easy in every way. I mean, it's easy to put together. It rolls out beautifully. It doesn't give you a hard time, and it is buttery and delicious every time. And we used, what, two ingredients? Aside from the water and salt, but nothing really special. I'm just rolling this out. I want it to be about 10 in to 11 inches or so. A circle that's about 11 inches or so. Even though my pie plate is only nine inches, I want a little extra around the edges. Place the pie crust in your pan. Try to Get all the sides even, like so. When you're putting pie crust in a pie plate, always kind of work with the pie crust. Never stretch it because as the pie crust bakes, it's just going to shrink. Now, what you want is about an inch around the border. So any extra, see that's a little bit extra. I just go ahead and cut that out. You don't want too much, otherwise it's going to be too thick and it'll be a disaster. Uh, but please, don't throw away the scraps because you know what I do? Is if I'm making a couple pies at a time, right? I keep all the scraps, I just throw them in the freezer, and then I gather them all together, make another pie. I mean, why, right? I love, my deep freeze is my best friend, slightly embarrassing because it's got bits and pieces of so much, but really, I don't like to waste a single thing in this house. So that's my tip of the day gather them up, and then make another pie. Just almost done. Wanted to get it all to the same thickness. 
Then what I do is I just kind of take the outside extra and kind of fold it down like so. Now you and I have known each other a long time. You know that crimping is just not my forte. So you just do whatever tickles your fancy to crimp your pie crust. You don't have to crimp it at all. Who cares? Nobody's judging. Certainly not me anyway. My oven, as you can tell, is preheating. I'm just going to finish kind of crimping around the edges a little tiny bit. Just take a fork and dock. Just pierce all around the sides and the base of the crust. I love the look of a pie crust in a pie tin. I don't know what it is, very retro to me. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blind bake this. So I take a piece of foil, lay it down in the crust. Make sure you don't destroy your edges if you worked really hard. Okay, and then you take some beans or dried rice, or you can even take something called pie weights, which are essentially about 10 times more expensive than dry beans, and they do exactly the same thing. So I just take these and I just replace them every couple of months. They work out really well. And I'm just gonna pop this into the oven for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, I'm gonna re going to remove the foil and the beans, and I'm gonna put the pie crust back in until it becomes golden brown. It probably will take another 15 to 20 minutes or so, and then I will show you what it looks like when it's there. You want it to cool completely too before we proceed to the filling. Pie crust is fully baked, setting aside to cool. Now for the filling, you need water, granulated sugar, cornstarch, and some strawberry jello, and some fresh strawberries. For the strawberry jello, I think it's a really key ingredient here. It's what gives you that glossy, beautiful finish. It's also what helps the filling stay together when you slice it. But if you don't want to use flavored jello, um, and you, you have to use some sort of gelatin of some sort in order to hold together, what you can do is you can cook about a pound or so of strawberries with some sugar, and then you drain it, you need a cup of liquid, and then you can go ahead and use plain gelatin instead of the flavored kind if you want. I think it's too much it's too much effort to go through when this is so delicious. So that's why I just do it this way. In a saucepan, you need water, sugar, and your cornstarch. Just mix these together and you want to cook these over gentle heat, not too high, but medium heat until it boils and then it becomes not so cloudy anymore because as you can see right now, it's quite white. But once it boils for a couple of minutes, it becomes a little more clear. So once it's up to a boil, I'll let it cook for two minutes and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. That looks great. You can see it's nice and clear. I'm gonna turn that off, add my strawberry jello, stir that around until it's completely dissolved. It'll take a couple of minutes. Fabulous, and then you just add your strawberries right in. Now what I like to do is I like to just cut my strawberries in half. I don't like my strawberry pie with teeny, teeny, tiny pieces of strawberries. I want it to be full on strawberries. That's why I just cut them in half. And if they're really small, I don't even cut them. I leave them completely whole. So that is always an option. But look how beautiful and glossy and gorgeous. You just wanna take your time to make sure that the liquid the sauce, or whatever you want to call it, has coated every single strawberry really nicely because otherwise it, you know, they might not set well. So you just want to take your time and stir, stir, stir. And take this and you just add it right into your pie shell. Now, what I like to do, and this is completely optional, optional, not at all necessary, but you know, it's cute. What I like to do is, first of all, you want to make sure that they're all kind of even, even out like so. And then, just to make things look pretty, I like to reserve a few of the strawberries and just place them around just so that they kind of peek through with the little stems. The stems actually are perfectly edible. I mean, I... I'm not gonna eat the stem, but it just looks so pretty and it doesn't hurt anybody. Just put a few around. And then I just take a little bit of that syrupy sauce and just even though whatever's left over in your pot and just kind of brush on the strawberries so that they set as well and they get nice and glossy. Now by edible, I mean you can eat them and they won't hurt you, but you know, 
take off the stem. <laughs> That's all. That looks so pretty. I mean, a little bit of green, you know? Look how beautiful this pie is. Just love it. It's very, I think, very retro, very classic. I just like it. I added one more strawberry because why not? Now this needs to go into the fridge to set. It's a minimum of four hours. You can leave it overnight if you want to. I'm just going to pop it in until it's fully set. Then I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll serve. But we have to make our mascarpone cream as well because, I mean, why not? <laughs> My pie is completely set. I ended up letting it go overnight, but four hours works great. What you need to make the cream is heavy cream, softened mascarpone cheese, some granulated sugar, lemon, and vanilla, and that is it. It's so, so good, you're gonna love it. Let's get started with the heavy cream. I'm just gonna whisk this with a handheld electric whisk until it develops stiff peaks. Perfect, you wanna make sure that you get them to stiff peaks, but not so stiff that they turn into butter. To my mascarpone, I'm going to add some granulated sugar. You notice I didn't, uh, I didn't sweeten the uh, heavy cream, and that's because we don't need to because we're adding the sugar here. A little lemon zest. You don't have to add the lemon zest. I rather like it. I think it gives you a nice, bright, sharp flavor. But since we're not using the juice, it's not going to be sharp as in like sour or, or have like that the tang to it. Just a nice, perfumey aroma. And then I like a little bit of vanilla. Make sure that if it's homemade, you shake it a little bit so that the vanilla beans rise to the top. And then just mix, whisk this for a few minutes until the sugar somewhat dissolves in the mascarpone. Excellent. Then what you do is you just take a little bit of the whipped cream and you just kind of fold it in to loosen up the mascarpone just a little bit more. And then you just take the rest and just fold it carefully so that you don't lose the volume. So just fold that right in. Just slicing myself a moderate size slice of strawberry pie. Ooh, I'm gonna love this. Okay, and then get that out. Look how beautiful it holds together. I mean, look at that gorgeous. Is that not like summer, barbecue, 90s, just everything that's awesome in the world? I love this. And then look at your cream. That's like the consistency of mousse almost. Let that fall. I just got to go. I just got to go for it. Got to go for it. Oh my God. Let's see. Good crust, lots of fresh strawberry, fresh cream. Mm hmm What summer pie dreams are made of. You have to make this. I beg of you, go to LaraInTheKitchen.com. I will have this ready for you. Share a photo with me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want. I want to see you enjoy this as much as we do. Hope you enjoy spending time with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.